Double Gong Wing Mega Eagle! Morning, fakes. Alright. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I built a few knives uh, a couple of videos ago. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've got to do more knives to uh, to get neat and tidy again, yeah? So, um, what? Well, uh, I, I figured we'd just uh, have some fun and make some make some weird knives over the next uh, next months ago. I'll, I'll keep keep that going in the background and, you know, try and focus on the crane or whatever. Um, and just, just have a bit of fun with weird blade shapes and handles and, uh, yeah, at the same time, get a bit neater and tidier. Um, so today what I wanted to do was a, uh, a pocket sized C-axe, yeah, uh, if, if, in case you haven't, you haven't, you know, heard of a C-axe before, it's uh, sometimes known as the um, broken sword dagger or whatever, it's a, you know, a Viking dagger, so it's a, a bit like a, um, a sheep's foot blade where you have a, a straight edge and the and the spine of the knife comes down to meet it but with the c-axe you have a it's angled and these are normally you know six inches plus um sometimes they're, they're curved i don't know i don't know it seems like a pretty broad term but the uh the angular the angular um drop point um and reasonably straight blade is, is the defining feature of them. So we're going to make a pocket version, yeah? <laughs> it should be a very easy blade to make, but I'm, I'm going to really try and concentrate and, and get my, you know, get my Macasso tidy and, and polish the blade and we'll put a, put a nice handle on it. Um, that would actually suit this style of handle very nicely, I think, you know, there was, there, there I was thinking this was a, you know, a mix up that I'd, I'd never want to reproduce, but I think I'm going to actually try and reproduce this handle, which I don't like for this blade on the CX. So we'll end, we'll end, we'll end up basically having a, um, you know, something like that. Yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> How festive is this, eh, chaps? The kids just made mince pies, isn't it? Apart from the odd bit of play doh in there, they're pretty good and all. <laughs> Cheers, lads. Mm. Okay, so just in, just in case anyone wants to take the piss, I've uh, I've actually bought myself a, a green gimp suit. It's padded, yeah, pa padded padded PVC ovals, chaps. Look at the state of these bad boys. Yeah, lovely, lovely. All 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 the insults welcome. Yeah, um, what I'm up to now? I've got some uh, stainless steel foil. Yeah, and I was I was. Um, uh, I mean, the whole reason I knife make is basically because of previous interests in uh, tool steel and, and and whatnot, and you know, for for lathe work and making uh, making making tools and whatnot. Um, and uh, and what um, yeah, with that, I've you know, I've various bits and bobs, um, silver steel. You know, if you want a nice nice shaft for something to run on, then. You've, go with silver steel and you can harden it up and polish it and it 
yeah, it's a very wear resistant surface and that and brass on silver steel works very nicely. You just need a little drop of fine oil and it's, it's you've got a beautiful beautiful running surface then if it's if it's not too high a load. Um, either way, so I've experimented before with, with other stuff, um, like non-knife stuff, uh, putting uh, putting a uh, an anti-oxidizing coating on stuff that I've hardened in the coal forge. So uh, um, talcum powder and um, I eat French chalk and uh, and mineral spirits or meths. Um, you know, you mix up a slurry and wrap your piece in wire and then paint the slurry on your on your piece to be hardened. Um, I, did, I think I did that in the in the sewing machine videos like a long time ago now. Uh, either way, so, something else I read about um, with machine parts rather than knife parts is is putting putting them in a uh, stainless steel envelope. So what I'm going to try and do with this knife, just for uh, curiosity as much as anything else, I've already put. Um, let me explain. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, uh, if you if you try and try and quench harden. Um, Unprotected steel, even with stainless, it will uh, it, it will oxidise and like you know stainless, especially the corrosion resistant. You should call it really. That's a, a better name for it. Um, that's what we call it in aviation circles. <laughs> uh, what am I saying? <laughs> the uh, I'm too busy blowing my own trumpet to um. Do you remember what I was saying? What was I saying? Yeah. You get you get things hotter, they oxidise easier. So so stainless will oxidise, and you get little little sort of worm marks across the metal when it when it gets really hot. And I quite I quite like it. You know, on a on a on a rafty tufty blade, it looks looks really nice. I think um, it gives it character, doesn't it? Where's my blade gone? Right, I was thinking. So, uh, just a little bit of an experiment. I've um, that line. That line is okay. Yeah, I, I'm trying really hard to keep things neat and tidy. It's just because I've uh, um, on the rest of it. I've been polishing this, this blade up, and I've gone over the bevel line slightly. Um, we should be fine because I'll I'll polish the blade itself up, the grind itself up with. Um, you know, a flat surface, and then we paper once we've hardened it. There's no point doing this now because I don't want to. I don't want an edge on it quite yet because it's we're just about to quench it. But the rest of it, I've polished up, and we're going to put it in the um, silver foil, uh, not silver foil, stainless steel foil. Um, make an envelope. Try and make it as airtight as possible. I'll, I'll crimp it down with the with the bead roller, and then we'll sprinkle a little bit of coal dust in there. And the idea is that the coal dust will. You know, react burn basically with any oxygen in there, and there'll be no incentive at all for this blade to oxidize. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so you know, um, kind of an unnecessary step, but I'm curious as to whether this works, how well this works. That's why I've gone to, gone to that sort of a finish. Uh, it's not a mirror finish, there's no point in doing a mirror finish yet, I don't think. I don't know, you know, maybe I'm wrong because look, basically, it's always, always easier to work on this piece of metal. Before it gets hardened, you, you, you appreciate that. So, and that, that's anything. I mean, abrasives work on hardened materials, but you know, it takes a lot more effort. You know, um, so, it's it's as far as the effort you put in, it's easier and quicker uh, to do it before it's hardened. But uh, you know, if if you're going to muck up that finish or you can't have too fine a blade because of oxidisation, then you've got no choice but to leave it a bit rougher and then do the fine work when it's harder and takes longer afterwards. So it's a definite um, benefit being able to do stuff in there. And, and as far as um, machine parts are concerned, um, you know, it means you can go to finish size before you harden it, really. I mean, you've always got the danger of a little bit of warp, which, you know, you wouldn't notice on a knife, but you would notice on machine parts if you've got a bearing fit or something like that. But, yeah, you know, we're just, just playing, you know, nothing too serious. We'll just, just have a look. We'll just make a little a little silver... It, fuck's sakes, I'm all over the place. Uh, stainless steel... Stainless steel envelope for the blade, yeah.
maintain it. And we've always found ways to kind of make it happen and make it work. Uh, but this shows the exhaustion of not just the sailors, but of the actual material itself. And if we continue to operate the way that we're operating in the Pacific Fleet mm. right now, this is going to continue to go down. And inevitably, the submarine readiness... Anyway, so let me get back to your question. I'll quickly go down the list of the sub briefs that we have on the page. Um, so we have the yawn, of course. Yeah. That. that worked really well. We have the Scorpion SSK, that's a French sub uh, We have the Typhoon, and we know the Typhoon works back. We have the Bori, that's the new ballistic missile that the Russian Navy has. Yeah, I did a complete breakdown of the Bori SSB. That one might give me trouble. Okay, so for the handle of this knife, I've just uh, I polished it up. I've, I've made a few little mistakes on the blade, so I'm not going to go mad on it. Um, you know, and that'll give me an excuse to make another one next week, wouldn't it? Hey, <laughs> all right. So um, with the handle, uh, I, I got a while ago. Uh, I've used them on a knife before um, on the, on the pommel of a of a knife. Um, what's on my face? I've got messing around with those. Fucking ancient blow torches, isn't it? They're covered in soot. <laughs> Looks like I've got like you know 1930s. See my oh yeah, it's up there. That's what that's why I look weird. Oh, it's like the first time, first time in ten years I've cared about my appearance. So I start now. Anyway, um, what? Uh, bastards. Yeah, <laughs> these these little discs of. Uh, uh, um, they're sold by a walking stick like um, part supplier yeah? so people who like to make walking sticks as a hobby they go to this shop and get um, you know these these black ones are that is black if you look at the side of it um, buffalo horn and they they got white ones which are cow bone um, you know and some other cool stuff like I, I was um, either way uh, but I've made the made the bolster out of the buffalo horn and I you know thought I'd try oak for the handle um, never done a handle on oak it's probably a good reason for it why no one does oak handles but uh, I was, you know I'm thinking it's gonna look nice it's next to that uh, next to that bolster so either way uh, I was was hoping I could stick another one on the back so we'd, we'd have a sort of um, you know the pommel pommel out of this stuff as well but it's too small really I need a, I need one a larger diameter Otherwise, it's going to look silly. But uh, we'll try and make a nice handle on this one. Quite liking the way it's looking at the minute. I'm, I'm really interested to see uh, what sort of uh, what sort of use I can get out of a weird shaped blade like this. Okay, check out this beautiful knife. Yeah? 
pretty cool. Pretty cool. I quite like it, you know. Um, I'm very tempted to knock up a little sheath for this and just carry it around and see uh, see like how it fares with day-to-day uh, -day life. Um, Yeah, I've made I made quite a few mistakes though, and a few of my experiments haven't gone too well. What has gone well, um, you know, I mean, it's it's probably going to be a useful blade shape. Um, unfortunately, putting it in that stainless envelope, uh, I don't. I, I think that's a, a very promising technique, but um, you really want to be done in an oven or something, or a, an enclosed gas forge where you're you're guaranteed through heat throughout the lot of it. Um, using the envelope the and and a big blowtorch uh, has left the tip very soft, which is a bit of a pain in the ass because that's kind of you know the reason for making a, a knife shape like this because you get a, a really useful tip out of it, don't you? If it'd be good for carving, but I've just been flicking a bit of wood with it and it's just uh, just uh, knock the knock the tip over, which is uh, what mildly annoying but that's the part of the reason why I didn't go for a full full polish on it either. I did uh, buff up the buff up the buffalo horn and a bit of the handle. Um handle handle shape's nice. That <laughs> handle shape's nice. Again, fits the hand and uh and what pretty pretty round round cross section to it. Uh, I quite like this this style of handle. Um okay. yeah. Fits my hand. Uh not sure what you'd call that sort of handle. Doesn't really matter what you'd call it, does it? <laughs> but uh, I like the combination of oak and uh, black buffalo horn. Quite quite like dicking around with uh, bits of dead animal. That's always always fun. It does polish up nice. It's not it's not the hardest thing in the world, you know. Um, like I think it's probably sort of on par with uh, with acrylic, but unlike the acrylic, you got like. You know, little little patterns in it like that on the outside, the nat the natural sort of grain of the of the corn, I suppose. Um, you get little bits of you know creamy colour stuff in the in the black. It's nice. Um, again, haven't haven't quite got my Ricasso perfect, but uh, that's you know, I keep going on about them. But that's that bit there, and I did uh, did have a, a slip up with the the grinder just at the back of the blade there but I think I'm getting uh getting my um getting back into the swing of things with the blades I shouldn't have left it so long between making a blade you know what happens when you've uh spent a bit of time trying to learn something and then you forget about it for a year or two and uh <laughs> you know you find you're starting from square one again but uh yeah but so so what um, I'm probably, you know, maybe I'll do a little sheath video if you fancy it. Um, again, I haven't, haven't done any lever working. I, I think I've done a bit of lever working quite recently because I did uh, my bushcrafty, uh, bushcrafty steer, a draw knife, and I did a little lever sheath for that. And um, I, don't know. I, don't, I don't think it's been over a year since I made a knife. One of my mates came over last summer and we made knives together. Um, Jeez, because I, I was doing it like every other video was a knife video, and then I, I just got uh, a bit obsessed with the hole, which I haven't forgotten about. I, you see, this whole things are going on in the background. It's just, uh, you know, Mrs. I, I, I promised the Mrs. that I'd make her a new table before Christmas, isn't it? And then cause that was back in August or something, and uh, she's like, uh, "Where's my bloody table?" I was like, "Fuck, <laughs> jeez, yeah, and I'm working on it, yeah." yeah. Yeah, so I'm I'm kind of doing that at the minute, you know, a dining room table, you know, like uh, something we can eat our Christmas dinner off because the family's growing, you know, so it's just uh, it just gets big all the time, doesn't it? And the kids are getting bigger themselves, so I, you know, I need a bit more space. Either way, I'm rambling now, <laughs> you know, that's the uh, that's the I don't know what we're going to call it, bushcraft uh, bushcraft siax, I suppose. Um. <laughs> Well, I'll carry this around and see what happens, and uh, I, if it's got any merit whatsoever, I think I might make an even smaller one. Um, I quite like the idea of trying a trying a, a fixed blade sheep's foot next. They used to be really really popular in in England. I mean, they still are. The folding sheep's foot's are popular. Uh, you do occasionally see a fixed 
fix sheets for um, they, I mean they've got a pretty straight blade as well I, I did I did put a little bit more of a curve on this blade it just felt unnatural to do a to do a straight edge and most of the ones that I see online like the bigger bigger C axes do have a little up sweep but I just basically put a you know pretty much a, a gentle curve along the length of this blade um, just don't know, don't know why it just felt like the right thing to do you chaps hey. but there we go anyway that's the uh, uh, yeah maybe these are common I just haven't seen them I'm not I'm not that into like looking at knives on the internet and that I, I just like you know making making what's in my mind isn't it but um, you know if anyone wants to point me in the direction of other interesting knives I can look at for a bit of a you know inspiration if there's anything anything similar to this out there like let me know isn't it because I'm quite interested um, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you know how it performs eh? uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right cool uh take it easy folks i'll keep i'm gonna keep keep doing little knife building videos in the background of like the main main stuff going on because i want to i want to get a bit tidier at it anyway so I'll, I'll catch you all later and there'll probably be another knife video or something soon isn't it uh, all right bye, -bye.